After putting in hundreds of hours into the game, these are the 5 big changes we would like to see done in Genshin Impact. If you were to ask one of the more experienced players which elemental resonance is the easiest one to include into their formation, chances are it's going to be Pyro, and while the answer itself is not the problem, there are certainly a few things that are definitely worth looking into, and honestly, most of the bonuses make sense and can feel powerful when used in your team, but one of them that really falls short would be the Hydro Resonance bonus, which at the current state of the game is not relevant and will most likely remain like that for a long time, and that's mainly because the current design philosophy in the game is based around damage output first and survivability second. Those who are able to deal a lot of damage in the shortest amount of time get rewarded in various activities like the Spiral Abyss or the previously released Hypostatic Symphony event, and even then, you're also saving yourself time and even resources like food when completing domains faster. So it comes with no surprise when you've got a resonance bonus like Hydro that will increase healing by 30% and also reduce the time your characters get affected with Pyro by 40%, which more or less is going to be useless since Barbara and Xing Cho can already cleanse you from the status with their skills. In fact, if they at least made the 40% be the resistance to pyro damage, then maybe it could at least serve a very particular usage on some of the floors in the Abyss. But the main problem here is that healing itself currently scales pretty well across every character that provides it, and on top of that, we also have quite a few number of shield users that have been dominating the endgame content, so basically it's a bonus that nobody wants or needs in their team, and this concern will only grow bigger once we start getting even more Hydro characters characters introduced into the game, because as of now, we literally have 4 characters in the roster, 2 of which are 5 stars, and to add even more insult to injury, only Barbara is considered a true healer, even if Xing Chou is able to heal with his passive, which barely leaves any room for the actual usage of the resonance bonus. And if you think about it, asking for a change to Hydro isn't that big of a deal, since Geo had already received its own facelift during 1.3 update, and instead of keeping the element undesirable for the majority of the player base, these new changes actually made Geo a worthy pick for your team. And what's even more amazing is that you need to have a shield in order to get the benefits from the Geo Resonance that makes the whole bonus feel more exciting with its own functioning risk reward mechanic, which could be an idea to do the same for Hydro. For example, it could be that after getting healed, you deal increased damage for a certain period of time. Either way, it's clear that Hydro Resonance needs to provide something more enticing for the current state of the game, and this will only become more relevant as we keep getting new Hydro characters in the future. If you've been playing the game for a while, then you can probably relate to those weekly boss fights, where sometimes it makes you feel like you hit the jackpot, but quite often you might also feel like you just wasted 60 resin for some materials you don't really need. And the thing that's most frustrating about these bosses would be the ascension materials they drop for your character talents, where even the most high paying customers are not able to obtain more of, which leaves you at the mercy of randomness that could result in weeks, if not months, of missing out on that one item that you need to make your character talents stronger and some of these talents can offer pretty big jumps in damage just by getting from level 6 to 8, not to mention the required amount of these materials grows in double when you need to go for the last two levels. And because of this, you could end up as an anecdotal example like this Razor, who is still missing his three Dwalin's Claws that all have been funneled to him exclusively since the game has launched, and not a single time was the weekly activity missed, which has been ongoing for half a year now. And to make things worse, some of these materials are shared between very popular characters, one example being the Shadow of the Warrior Ascension material from the child boss fight that is needed by Ganyu, Xiao, and now the newly introduced Rosaria as well. And this is honestly one of the biggest offenders currently in the game, since a lot of players like to max out their characters, especially the ones they've been enjoying the most, and to take away this opportunity with a randomized decision maker can feel a bit lackluster. So it would really be a great thing to see if Mihoyo could add some sort of similar quality of life feature, like Dust of Azoth, that lets you convert your other unwanted boss ascension materials into the ones that you actually need for the team of characters you're growing. And this is actually a pretty big issue, because the more characters they release, the more you're going to be forced to spread yourself thin with these materials, and while sticking with level 6 talents isn't the biggest deal breaker, it still holds a ton of influence in your team building, especially for places like the Abyss, where more damage means faster clear time. Still, as long as we can get some sort of mitigation introduced for these weekly boss drops, at least we can feel like our resin is put towards something that is more stable than the the current situation we're in. And let's not forget we didn't even mention the non-existent drop rates of prototype weapons. 
If there's one thing that has been playing a major role in team building, then it would be the importance of elemental reactions and some of the ways it has influenced a lot of team compositions. And it's no secret that Vaporize and Melt are currently considered the best reactions for endgame content simply because they take into account all of your character's stats while every other reaction out there that are often called transformative reactions only use elemental mastery, the level of your character and the enemy's resistance to create the final damage number. And it wouldn't be such a big deal if the the simple formula that developers have created would actually work for endgame content, but because it starts off strong in early game and then falls off once you're going up against the upper floors of the abyss, the results start to speak for themselves. When you can hit upwards for 20,000 damage without too much effort when using Melt or Vaporize, while the same cannot be said about the remaining reactions. But there are some reactions that function as intended, like Freeze, Swirl, Crystallize and Superconduct, which all serve a different purpose other than giving you more damage directly, and even then, you will find Swirl being used together with sets like Viridescent that reduces the enemy's resistance, not to mention it also spreads the current status it reacts with. So this leaves us with Electro Charge and Overload that just so happen to be the ones that require Electro to be triggered, and it's for this very reason why this element currently feels underwhelming for a lot of players, since Pyro, Hydro and Cryo are all able to produce an amplifying reaction that basically rewards you for having a strong character with good stats, while if you choose to purely invest into Elemental Mastery, no matter how high you go up, it's still going to have a tough time matching the damage output of their better counterpart, not to mention you're not even able to produce critical hits with any of the transformative reactions. Basically, the current significance of elemental mastery is very inconsistent and perfectly sums up the expression where the rich get richer and the poor, well, remain poor, since using this stat in Melt and Vaporize can actually increase the damage output significantly, while putting in a lot of elemental mastery into transformative reactions falls off very quickly, and obviously changing something so fundamental like elemental reactions is not an easy task, but the more time we spend ignoring this issue, the more obvious it will become to everyone who reaches the endgame and realizes the power of amplifying reactions. Of course, as long as MiHoYo doesn't add any challenging content, or at least challenges that reward speed and damage, then it might not be such a big problem, but for a lot of players, they want to feel powerful when they use their favorite character or even element, so finding a solution for this current situation might become relevant in the future. Sure. It's kind of interesting when you think about it. Genshin Impact is an open world game that features amazing artwork, music and character design, but when you take a look at the end game, there's only Spiral Abyss waiting for you and the domains you will be farming in order to beat it. And what's even more peculiar is that for a game with so little end game, you would think that it would at least have constant challenges thrown at you, but instead, what we get are basically bi-weekly rotations of a new blessing of the Abyssal Moon, and then maybe once in a while, the floors or the enemies change. Now, the way Spiral Abyss gets treated with content updates kind of makes sense when you start asking around the community and you get results like nearly 40% of people haven't even entered the upper floors, but even then, a big chunk of the player base have seen everything the Abyss has to offer, and even if a lot of them haven't conquered it with perfection, it still leaves a few things for us that are worth taking a look at. And of course, you could argue that if you mess around with the structure of the upper Abyss and introduce different enemies or floor bonuses, then it will leave with less time for the players to prepare their teams, but then again, changing up the floors more often can also lead to more opportunities as well. So while this is a matter of balancing act, it's still surprising to see that the Abyss remains as one of the most mysterious places, not just in terms of lore, but also as a gameplay decision as well. But however you look at it, adding more variety or new floors could make the only endgame content we have feel more alive and interesting. For a lot of us, artifacts are the life and blood of Genshin, and if we don't spend our time grinding and cursing at the domains, then you can find yourself navigating the menus and praying to gods of randomness to grant you those sweet, sweet rolls and substats. And the more you play the game, the more time you will spend managing your artifacts in the menu, and one of the things that could really help out would be some sort of quality of life change when it comes to your character's loadout, because it's only natural that after acquiring hundreds of artifacts, there needs to be some sort of a solution for managing loadouts, since even if you spend money on refreshing your resin, chances are you are still shifting those artifacts between your characters and trying to remember which exact combination of them you used after a while can get a little annoying. And it's basically as simple as that. Getting a quality of life change for artifact loadouts would be a godsend for endgame players so that less time would be spent doing these manual tasks. But at least we're not living in the dark ages anymore when you couldn't even lock your artifacts, which seriously feels like a distant fever dream.
even with all of that said and done, it's important to remember that Genshin is an open world game with insanely talented people behind it and experiencing gameplay, music and story without needing to pay up front is an amazing thing to say the least, but even then, it always helps to provide constructive feedback and suggestions if we want the game to thrive onwards. But if you enjoyed this video and would also like to help this channel thrive as well, make sure to subscribe to us by hitting the bell notification on and as always, gently press that like button. Also, you can get more news about Genshin by following us on Twitter. Thanks for checking out the video and see you next time.